multiple reasons. Primarily because I really um, am fascinated by our director's work. <laughs> Uh, I think the guy's extraordinary. Um, and then the story, obviously you have, you know, Christian Bale and Matt Damon and you have, you know, world-class actors telling a, just a terrific, uh, wildly entertaining, like strange slice of American history. Um, and then you have this character, Leo Beebe, who I play, who was a fascinating central figure within the drama and the villainry in a way of what happens within the story of the decision to basically take these three Ford cars across the finish line at the exact same time and how all the dynamics that got them to that final moment basically and I just thought the character was um, you know a, ter a terrific conflict in a sense he was a terrific um, what's it called anti-hero in a way through all of the different scenes it takes a very rare director who has the, the ability to be at this point in his career to pull off a movie like this. Um, and I feel like obviously, you know, Jim was sort of given this story um, at this point in his career where he, I feel, is on fire right now as a creative uh, filmmaker. Um, and to tackle something this, I keep saying it's like the Lawrence of Arabia of car driving. I think the thing I was really took away from it is more the idea of about men at a certain point in their lives, a certain point in their lives as friends, a certain point in their lives and in their careers, in their corporate careers and in reinventing themselves or in terms of the, the period of time where they decide they don't want to play the game anymore and all these different things that are all sort of colliding together in the storytelling and in the actual experience, the true story have happened that happened here and these, you know, strange, powerful men in these huge corporate elements with Ford and Ferrari and these, you know, sort of big egos that were involved. Henry Ford, Enzo Ferrari, Ken Miles, Shelby, you know, all these different people and this character, Leo Bibi, who has that same level of, in Lee Iacocca, John Bernthal's amazing character, that all these men sort of colliding in their power and egos at the point in their life where they are either exactly who they are for the rest of their life or they're making big changes. I found it fascinating. I love this job in so many ways. I love this particular job because you, when you get to work with people who you, you know, you feel are your matinee idols in a way, you know, even if you get to work with people who technically are your, you know, equals in a way, you've grown up together. I don't know, I didn't know Matt at all, I just know his work and, and I'm a huge fan of his work. I think people are going to really love watching Christian in this movie because he's got this sort of loose, very um, strange sort of uh, just original take on the character that is really fun to watch. He's he's uh, he's got a kind of comedic looseness to him that we oftentimes don't get to see Christian play, which t takes me back to what I did with him with American Psycho, where he had that too. Even though the character is so, you know, obviously savagely intense, but. You know, Christian is a world-class, if not one of the great actors of all time, and, and he, you see it when you play with him, and he also happens to be a terrific guy, so it's kind of rare. What I see on a daily basis is this ultra-obsession to detail that's really quite remarkable, even to the point where we had one of, the, I thought, the most fascinating days I've ever had in my career, where it was the Ford plant, uh, the Ford factory, and they had built this entire factory of Ford for one single day of shooting on um, this extraordinary scene, and Jim was behind the camera, and he was very agitated about one of the ex what, what one of the extras was doing deep in the background, and the director of photography asked him, why are you even looking at that? And Jim said, I don't look at the face. I am a doctor. I look at the pancreas it's built from scratch because almost all of it, you, you can't just, these places don't exist anymore. That's why I keep saying it's the Lawrence of Arabia of car racing films. There's a massive artistry behind the design of these cars and, and the operation of them too. And then what I find fascinating is the dynamics that go into being a race car driver and the madness of it and the idea that these, that particularly back then, they were borderline test pilots. This movie is truly about the dynamics of these men and these families and these, this, this group of people who all collided together to try and do this.
It's obviously a movie that the central idea is about racing, but I think the thing that actually interests me most, and I think that people will take away more from the movie, is the idea of the relationships between these men and between, you know, the families that were involved. The ki and Noah's wonderful character, and the you know, it's just I, I find that to be what's struck me about this movie. The challenge of the story and the challenge of Ferrari being so um, powerful and, and consistent in how every race they were winning and that Ford wasn't even really in the game at that point and they were starting to be out of the zeitgeist of American thinking in some ways um, and the you know the horror that that caused in Henry Ford the second and that caused in people like Leo Beebe and you know the fact that they truly believe that this company had a much more important place in American um, history and in, in, in America and so that's really what this fight was about in some ways yes it was about racing but more it was about you know its place in history and I think that's where the movie really also hits a very interesting tone of you know, a company struggling for survival and, a, and an epic company struggling for survival and a company that felt like it had won the war, a company that felt like, you know, it had truly been involved in uh, the building of America at its most idealistic, at its most powerful time after the war and, um, and the technology that's going into building cars at that point too and the changes. It's just a very, it's a very deep part of American history actually. I'm not much of a car guy, but I walked onto this set today and I was like, I want that car. For the first time in my life, I was like, that car in particular, I like want to figure out, is that something, you know, it, it's, it struck me. The beauty of these cars is really interesting and also makes me be like, why are we not making cars that look like that anymore? My hope is this is a rare, cinematic, very exciting uh, evening of just amazing entertainment truly I mean that's really what it is and it also happens to be historical and I think it's gonna have some really fantastic acting and just some epic sort of rare old-school filmmaking and the scope of it